This episode of Dirt Time is brought to you by Submar. Submar has a long-standing tradition of providing cost-effective, environmentally conscious erosion control products and installation services. This pipeline was exposed in a wetland area, and a flexible concrete mat was chosen as protective cover. Immediately after installation, wetland flow was re-established and the revegetation process has started. You'll notice that vegetation grows denser in the matted portion than in the adjacent wetland areas. After revegetation, mats are completely covered and no longer visible. Concrete mats not only protect channels but create new areas for marine life habitat. Submar is proud to be involved with numerous federally sponsored projects that protect marsh areas and the wildlife living in these refuge. Submar, protecting the environment and wildlife. Synergy with nature. Hey everybody, welcome to Dirt Time. You know, we're out here in Redding and Sulphur Creek doing our stream restoration. We have a perfect opportunity to put in some articulated concrete blocks. This is our ACB episode. Uh, you know, ACBs are perfect for applications as low water crossings. It's a beautiful day. It's all for salmon and steelhead, and it's going to be a great day. Stay tuned. You know, for, uh, for kind of low impact sort of service roads, uh, rural roads, there's, there's two ways you can do it. You can put in a culvert. We're all familiar with that. You can put in a culvert for your crossings of your streams and you can size the culvert and all that stuff. Another thing you can do is come in and, and develop a low water crossing. You know, they require no maintenance. They're already designed for any flow you want because you just match the natural channel configuration and lay your low water crossing in here. There might be some restrictions at certain times of the year, but usually if you uh, armor the bottom of the low water, water crossing sufficiently, you can get tanks across here all seasons of the year. So, you know, let's look at the other alternative to culverts, the low water crossing. Well, here's our, uh, our road bed here, Sulphur Creek Road. Uh, there used to be an old 18 inch culvert right across here. It was collapsed and water just spilled over the road and down the road and so we pulled that culvert out. We have a temporary road built on that side while we're doing construction and here we have our, our base laid for our articulated concrete block. We're going to bring the road over and the road will cross this crossing kind of naturally and cross on over and out. The driver will kind of dip down, drive over the uh, low water crossing and on out. We will then later remove the, the temporary road there and this will be functional. So we're, we're pretty much ready to go. We have about six to eight inches of uh, road base down here. We have a firm, firm base. That's very important. We've also dug in a key trench, an anchor trench at the leading end. The water is coming down this direction. We flop the articulated concrete mattress down into the anchor trench so that when the water comes down, it won't have a chance to get underneath the mattress. It's cabled together and lay it out across here and anchor it in place and then later we'll cover it with some uh, pea gravel or you can put soil infill and we're done. Here we have some articulated concrete blocks. You know articulated concrete blocks are a hard armoring system. They're used a lot in rivers, uh, river crossings. They can actually hard armor the, the channel banks. They're called articulated concrete blocks because they are flexible. You lay this armor system down and it can flex and give. Sometimes there's some bank failures and the, the mat will give and conform to those failures and the cabling system integrated into it holds the whole unit together. There's a couple of different ways they're installed. You can lay the individual blocks. You can lay the blocks down and cable them in place. This particular type of block is got the cables already in the block and it actually has cables going from biaxial from two different directions. And so since it's cabled already when it's poured, you lay it down in sheets, it's got strength in both directions, and you can actually lay it down with this uh, big spreader bar. Now the, the last thing we're gonna do with this to make these environmentally sensitive, you can come in and uh, put soil or dr free draining material, you can get these to vegetate. So you can get grasses, and I've actually seen shrubs and willows and stuff grow through the interstitial spaces here. In our application, we're going to fill in some granular slab fill 
in between these openings and that angular material will also provide even more strength. It will allow permeability, which is going to be good when you're talking about our new stormwater law where you want to make sure you get uh, water going infiltrating into the soil as much as possible. That's the opposite of a culvert which concentrates water and dumps it in a concentrated manner. We're spreading water out, we have an opportunity to dissipate some of that energy and actually maybe get some of that water to go into the soil. All right, well, we're just about ready to go. We've got our sub base laid. Uh, we have our anchor trench in place. All we have to do now is lay the fabric down. We have like a 12 ounce woven fabric. We'll put that down and then we'll lay the articulated concrete block. I mean, we're, we're ready to go. This thing's ready. So we're laying our geotextile down. We have plenty of fabric due to the width of the fabric. So we're going to lay one down and then shingle the other one over. Again, we're shingling it in the direction of flow, just like shingling a house. So we have, uh, we have eight by 20 sheets. We're going to lay our, our first one down here and it's going to dangle in three feet into the anchor trench and have five feet out. Then we'll lay our second one down in here the full 8 by 20 foot section in here and then we'll lay our fourth one over here which is our uh, full 8 by 20. Okay it looks like we're uh, looks like we're ready to lift it huh? We'll use all the shackles okay. with the hook and then uh, you will lift the frame swing the mat over the target area and slowly lower the mat down the middle of the mats on the 20 and 8 foot dimension side, at its midpoint, you see the yellow marking submark. We use that for placement, and that's why we had marked uh, the highlighted position here. So the center of your drop will need to come down, and you'll get me to within inches of that mark, and I will then fine tune that placement, and then on my command, you will lower it down. If everything looks good, we'll unshackle. If not, we'll make our minor adjustments and then repeat the process. In regards to uh, the mat orientation, we establish uh, the control on the ground for the first mat layout and its overall alignment. From that point, we begin to build the mat system. There is fine tuning that can and will be done with each mat that is placed. What we want to do is look down the line of the uh, blocks or mat system along the edges to make sure everything is staying true to line and form. So some of the articulated concrete blocks are uh, cabled with stainless steel cable, that'd be really costly. Some have uh, galvanized cable, stainless steel fittings. This particular one has an extruded polypropylene rope and this particular cable has 9,500 pounds tensile strength which is really strong and it's got an 80 year life. These cables are going to last for a good long time. Once you begin to build your footprint, you have your orientation, things are locking in. It becomes a little bit easier for that guy, the most important player here in the group, the operator, to get this mat down in its final resting place. Okay, so we can tuck the ropes under, or you can always come back and cut the cables. Now, if they tucked under and you ever had to come back to your crossing, and lift it up again to work on your pipeline or whatever, you can leave the, the cables in. Very easy then to come back in and remove it. Well, we got our uh, mats in. The next step is we'll get the excavator and we'll uh, compact and fill the anchor trench. 
We've uh, tucked in our, our ropes and cables. Those are tucked in. We also are gonna go over now, we can remove our temporary road. We've got that flapped over. We're gonna remove the temporary road, get our drainage shaped in. And then the last thing, we're gonna bring in our granular fill and fill the spaces in here. We're also, the next step is to also bring our road base in. So our road comes in like this. You'll actually, these la first couple of blocks, the leading edge, you won't see because they'll be underneath the road. The road will approach, cross, and back out the other side. I, I really like this. It, it went down very easy. Uh, just uh, mechanically, you can use the excavator. I, I like the idea that the cables are here and that you can remove it. Uh, I think it's gonna have great application. This is what we're referring to as slab fill. It's about a 3 8 inch angular rock and uh, very granular material. It's, it's been sorted. It's very clean and porous. But by the angles in here, it has an internal angle of friction that's very high. So that's why this stuff will stack up very high, very steep because of the angles, an internal angle of friction in there. And this provides many points of contact. It also provides more strength to the road prism there. Now here we have a pile of uh, road base. This is referred to as three quarter minus base rock. Now, unlike the slab fill, this material is poorly sorted or graded. It goes from three quarter inch to granular material to actually sand size material. This stuff is not permeable. In fact, when you add the appropriate kind of moisture, like 15 to 17% moisture, and you compact this material, you remove all the void spaces, all the air spaces, and all the places for water to collect. In fact, as you pound this stuff together, it becomes very hard, like road base. And, uh, and that's what it's used for. So now we're, uh, we're filling the interstitial spaces with the uh, angular course, that uh, slab fill material. And that'll help anchor everything together. We'll get it worked into the cracks, drive over it. Again, the internal angle of friction is really great, and it'll help anchor and hold the whole thing together. Now all the edges are starting to tie together. Be a tremendous amount of strength. As Bobby's doing here, he's raking it in. That gets the material down in the cracks, working it in there together. And then it's still got flexibility if it needs to, but it's got a lot of tremendous amount of strength so we can drive our tanks over it. We're gonna put a little bit of base rock that Bruce has here right into the leading edge of the system. So I'm gonna lay some right in here. This base rock will give us a nice compacted edge in here for the water coming in. We want to get it compacted. Well, job complete. You know, we got our articulated concrete block, low water crossing. We've got the anchor trench in there. We've got the block filled with the slab fill, granular material here. In fact, our uh, block is then also keyed into the leading edge. We built our road right into it, so there's a couple of feet of uh, block underneath the roadway. Nothing's going to get under that. We're grooming the uh, downstream side. We'll get that uh, channel going, but we've got a nice spread out, non-concentrated flow sheeting across here. Uh, when this little tributary, this thing uh, is about 55 acres. So we've got some pretty good flows coming through here during the winter time. It's gonna be a shallow flow now. We had a 18 inch culvert that was always backing up. So the 18 inch culvert was not big enough. What's good about low water crossings is the road is not gonna interfere with the natural hydraulic drainage patterns. We're back to the natural drainage system, the way it used to be. We're not choking it down to a culvert and then opening it back up again and causing all sorts of erosion. Water is going to sheet off this watershed like it used to. So this is looking good. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode of Dirt Time. Articulated concrete block episode. You know, we learned the ABCs of ACBs. We learned how to install them. We learned the benefits of them. We learned a little bit about watershed restoration. Stay tuned for our next episode of Dirt Time. Good to see you.